Hello and welcome to Channel Sport this morning. It's great to have you join us again. I am Taya Salam. I'm Cecilia Morgan. This morning, yes, yeah, something very great. Finally, Nigeria is on the medals table and it was S.A. Brume who did that for the country in a long jump, leaping to 6.97 meters mm. for her to be able to win a bronze medal in the long jump event. Congratulations to Ese Brume doubling up from winning bronze. That was at the World Championships last year. Also on the program, still talking about the Olympic, Kirsten Vahum has set a world record in the 400 meters hurdles. Mm. Okay, that's a big one. It was a huge, uh, Huge smashing of the world record. Smashed it. Also on the program, Rivers Angels, they are in the CAF Women's Champions League. Yes, they can now boast their chest that they will be representing Nigeria later in the year in Egypt in the very first edition of the Women's CAF Champions League. Was never in doubt. Congratulations to Rivers Angels uh, going to the maiden edition of the CAF Women's uh, Champions League. Indeed. Welcome back. Let's get straight into the Olympics. We have a guest in the studio who is joining us from the very beginning of the show. And of course, later, Femi Adetula will be joining us from Tokyo, the PRO of Nigeria Olympic Committee. But right here in the studio, we have a sports administrator, Yomi Koko, is here. Morning. Nice <laughs> to see you again. It's great to have you back on the show. It's safe <laughs> to say you're making a comeback. Or yeah. should we call it a comeback? Yeah, call it a comeback. Yeah, it's going to <laughs> come on. on the day, we are celebrating the first medal. Uh, finally, mm -hmm. like everyone that's been waiting with bated breath, we knew that, yes, okay, from the beginning. And when you're talking about medal, hopeful, mm -hmm. blessing Okagura, of course, was number one. And, well, no thanks to the so. doping issues. Essay Brume, yeah. then, of course, we had yeah, uh, Toby Loba Musson. Then the rest, that's Toby Loba Musson finished just Leave it outside the medal finishing fourth. And now Essay Brume, she has won the very first medal for Nigeria. This is more than a bronze medal for most of us because we've been anticipating and waiting for something so long. But in reality, a bronze medal is a bronze medal. Yeah, Let's it is. Call it thing. <laughs> yeah, else, I is saw it? someone throwing around that golden bronze. Ah, <laughs> <I'm getting. laughs> it's a bronze and uh, congratulations to her. She's uh, done very well. Improvement from Rio fifth and then moving on to the World Championships in Doha. And, um, you know, from, uh, from there, and, and then she's got a medal now. And mm. uh, I think she's really very, working very hard. Most of the athletes, basically, they work very hard on their personal uh, yeah, yeah. efforts. And, um, you know, most of us, we criticize only because we see that if there are more energies and support given to all these athletes by the administrators, definitely they would be able to perform much better and win more laurels for Nigeria. Mm. And at the same time, you know, there's an ascension that people expect that uh, once an athlete is going out of, um, of the stage, there are some who are supposed to take over. Right. Like, there's been an overuse and over-attention on Blessing Okagbara. Yeah. You saw her the way she just capitulated in Rio, mm. and now she's trying to come back and then this drug thing. Mm. And afterwards, you know, that's, that's a very sad tale for uh, Blessing there. But regardless, it means that uh, always Nigeria, we've got that physical attribute to make... Um, you know, things happen for us internationally. You're talking about the country of, yeah, 100 million people. Yeah, you're always claiming you're more, more than 200. Yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah, you we, can, we don't but, have the official word just yet. Yeah, so, but let's work with the 100 million. All right. And you're talking about different opportunities, totaling like maybe, maybe 10,000 or 20,000 in sports, mm -hmm. and we still cannot find means to dominate. Mm. You know, a country like the U.S., for instance, they're taking advantage of their population. Nation. China is doing mm -hmm. the same. So. And uh, a country as small as Jamaica, mm. they, they simply <laughs> focus a lot on what they know they're best at doing. Mm. And they put a lot of energy, sponsorship, and support into that. Mm. And you, you're seeing the outcome. So what happened to Nigeria? We used to be, uh, we, we, we have the renowned NIS, which basically now is... It's not up to what, what, what it was in the 70s and the 80s. Yeah. So what is happening to the NIS, for instance? That's where we're supposed to have most of our, our trainers coming from. You can't just be putting money everywhere only at the last minute and expecting the athletes to mm. conjure something. So it's quite impossible. So anytime you see these athletes uh, come bring up individual lawyers, I strongly think that uh, they're just superheroes. Mm. Believe me, they've done very well. So mm. I congratulate AC yeah. and I, I hope... Uh, next time, from the 5th to 3rd, 
the next Olympics in 2024 in Paris, mm. then maybe she will get the gold. Yeah. It, it could be gold because her leap here, I mean, six, nine, seven. I remember early, earlier this year, was it in May, Tayo? I mean, uh, the African record that she said, 7.17 meters. I mean, if she was able to do yeah. that here, mm -hmm. I mean, that could have been a good yeah. medal. And if you check, uh, Mikabo, who won the bronze medal, it was, who won the gold medal. She was seven. even, yeah, she was even uh, at, at the bronze medal uh, uh -huh. event at a point. Yes. Why Essie was leading, Reese also was there. Mm. So all of a sudden, her last leap was what gave her that seven meters. So it could have been, could have just been, could yeah. Been, yeah, could have been, could have been, been. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. and all of that. Anyways, congratulations to Issa Brumel. Let's just give you all the uh, updates uh, concerning Team Nigerian Athletes uh, on uh, Tuesday early this morning in Japan. Of course, you have to start with Issa Brumel, like we have said already, 6.7 meters uh, uh, to win bronze uh, for Nigeria. She actually tied with Brittany Reese uh, with the same jump of 6.7 meters, but the American got silver because her second best jump of 6.95 was better than Brumis 690. So that's uh, how Issa Brumi ended up uh, settling uh, for bronze uh, in that competition. Let's see uh, the uh, the slide of um, other uh, uh, Team Nigerian athletes uh, in action. Uh, let's go to the 400 uh, meters hurdle. Um, yeah, just 400 meters round one. Uh, it was Patience of Cone Georgia lining up uh, in that particular race. Uh, Patience uh, just uh, managed to finish seventh out uh, as last. And it hits one, and she's eliminated uh, from the competition. In the men's 200 meters round one, Divine Odudure There's a lot of expectations placed on this guy as well, too, because of uh, everything he's done in the last uh, couple of years, especially over uh, the 200 meters. Uh, he came second in his uh, own heat uh, with a time of 20.36 seconds, and is advanced into the semi finals of the 200 meters. Of course, there's also the women's. Uh, wrestling, uh, uh, freestyle, that's 62 kg. Unfortunately for Team Nigeria, Aminat Adini uh, lost uh, uh, to Irina Koliadenko, uh, victory by four uh, for Irina. So it's the end of the road for Aminat Adini. While uh, Blessing Oboro to do later today will take on Mariana Stalk of the USA. That's in the gold medal match uh, for the women's freestyle, 68 kg. Uh, still talking about uh, action later today involving Team Nigerian athletes. Men's short put qualification, you're going to have an Ekwechi um, Chukwe Buka. It's going to be in action as well, So It's going to be up against the Ryan Cross of the USA uh, World uh, number 1. And later today again, Divine will come back on the tracks uh, for the 200 meters semi-final. is in one for that one. It's going to be going up against Femi Ugunode. Of course, Nigerian will races. Uh, for Qatar. Uh, it's fully expected that Divine goes through to the final in this particular race because it's the fastest in that field. 19.73 uh, uh, personal best. Uh, no one has come close to him uh, in that particular uh, field. So expect him to go into the, into the final if he doesn't fall start. Well, uh, hopefully the pressure will not be on him yeah. because a lot of times this fall start comes from a certain yes. level of pressure, you know. You're, you just want to like take off immediately after the gun. But the, the good thing about 200 meters is that uh, even if you lose track of a split of a second, you can mm -hmm. still find your means to come back. But 100 meters is quite dicey. So uh, you can't really blame him much because he was responding to certain things. Mm. Uh, you know, most of these athletes too, a lot of times uh, when they're out there to, uh, to represent mm. Nigeria, they're actually also looking out for themselves because mm -hmm. they know that gives them further opportunities, uh, which are rarely taken care of here. That's the truth, you know. You can't keep denying it. I'm not around to patronize anyone. Nope. But... Believe me, I give a lot of credit to the athletes. You know, you, you heard about what Chimizia has been saying. Oh, Granted yeah. International. Oh, okay. See, we're gonna go through that. Yeah, <laughs> you see, it's it's a whole generation of people you're bringing in from abroad. People who are not used to this lifestyle here, where people are intimidated and suffer, and they're still telling the oppressor, "Sorry." Mm. You know, these are different people. They grew up abroad. They were born to speak. So yeah. they're going to speak their mind. Yep. For so, me, I love the way they're bringing all these foreign born. That is the real teaser. It's going to make things to start changing. Mm. You, you heard Leon Balogun was also talking. Well, yeah. And this guy is talking and more people will be talking. Then it's about time to look right in the mirror Inward. every morning and say, where is the nose? Is it under? Is it up? Where are the lips? You know, you need to find those things. And so I think it's really very good. I, I, I'm really very happy for the athletes, all of them, because it's, it takes a lot for you to put in so much without support. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been through that, working on zero naira budgets to do things, and you, you look around, you can't even find anyone. Mm -hmm. 
So I give them the credit, whole credit. Mm. Credit to the athletes. Hopefully, Divine, when he stepped on track later, about 12, uh, yeah, about 12 no, 50 12 p.m., 12 noon, uh, she, he would be able to get into the final just to make up for what happened in the 100 meters because he was really looking forward to it. But somehow, that false start, I didn't say it, but <laughs> I, you know, those guys' eyes are yeah. sharper. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> their <laughs> job. Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't say it, but those guys' eyes were apparently sharper. They're right there on the track. Oh, it was disqualified. Yeah, Hopefully, uh, we'll see. technology to detect, but, yeah, uh, to detect anything. Detect. So maybe a little bit of your hair, just <laughs> right up. We just do and then, uh, oh, and, and who is that? It. That's you. Who is that? That's very you. Maybe easy. your finger moved mm -hmm. or something. So mm -hmm. it's always very dicey. But the good news is in that semi-finals, he's not with the same heat with Noah Lai. So yeah. whatever Noah Lai is going to do, I yes. really don't care. Yes. So Divine, just focus on your race and see what you can do and get to the final first. Mm. And also because maybe we're not uh, in those... Uh, quarter miles and so on. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. even there's been athletes who like mistakenly crossed over on the lane mm -hmm. to other and then they got disqualified like the athletes from Burundi, mm -hmm. you know. So these are some of the things that uh, sports administrators in Africa needs to take care of. Mm -hmm. You know, they busy themselves uh, trying to position themselves right at the top echelon of, uh, you know, administration globally instead of looking at the basic rules, the way these rules are changing, the way the evolution comes, mm. and how to be able to position this uh, to the athletes, not just the ones that are at competitive level, mm -hmm. but even that the ones that are growing, it's because growing, yeah. they need to be in tune at different times, what rules were subsisting, and then the ones that are changing. That's and from cool. there, you know, they get better with it. Because at times, you can actually perform better when you're using old rules, mm. because it puts you under some certain uh, level of uh, performance uh, demand. Yeah, yeah, advantage. Okay. Yeah. So th that's what you expect from them. But when people uh, busy themselves looking at positions and then going around with some petty things and not mm -hmm. concentrating on the athletes they claim to represent, that's exactly what we see. We're seeing the difference with wrestling. Mm -hmm. A committed man. Yeah. You know, wrestling <laughs> federation, people by people who are committed, passionate, and they're competent. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you can't deny it that Daniel Gali. And the Bayelsa State Government has done very well for wrestling in Nigeria. Mm. Oh, it's because they had to pick that up, right? And we don't even have a performance uh, director because I've seen some. I don't, I don't know if we do, but I doubt because I've never heard of it. Uh, because I know that there's most, most countries, when, when they're going for major international competitions, most of the people you speak with are usually their performance directors. But we really don't have anything like that. Someone who is actually solely in charge of how the athletes are performing, you know, just... Okay, Let me, let's let, leave that. And, okay, okay. okay, you know, <laughs> I was just about saying something that we're not likely to have a lot of things, you know, going the right way others are doing it and they're getting okay. results. Because, again, look at sports practitioners in Nigeria. They come up, they, I don't know who actually invented this, this, this seat that uh, let's use sports to take people off the street. Come. Yeah, was uh, Mary Yali ever in the street? <laughs> was Kano in the street? You know, this is an industry. This is a job. Mm. This is something that makes money, creates employment for people all over the world. You're taking no one from, uh, off from the street. Give them a job, and their job and their talent has to do with sports. Mm. So remove that very phrase, which is quite confusing and misleading. They've created this myth for a long while. And that's the reason you cannot have a performance uh, director, because at the end of the day, they're still going to hand it over based on political patronage. Mm. Okay. All right, uh, Femi Adetila will join us uh, from Tokyo uh, right now. Femi is the uh, public relations officer of a Nigeria Olympic Committee, joining us straight from Tokyo to tell us what it's like for Nigeria to be able to get their very first medal. I believe this will mean more than gold to all of you right there. Good morning, Femi. It's good to have you join. Well, uh, we, are, we, are, we are in the evening here uh, because uh, <laughs> of the time difference. Uh, let me say good evening to you, Nigeria. Okay. What's it like right now with the NOC? I know you guys will definitely be celebrating that medal from SA Brome, knowing that another one is coming in a few hours from now. Yes, uh, if, if I can hear you very well, because uh, uh, it's not too clear around here, I can't, I can't hear you very well. But if I can hear you very well, uh, I think the atmosphere here is, is electric because uh, uh, the, the happiness, and, and it started last night uh, when Bless and Bodo Dudu qualified uh, for the finals of, uh, of wrestling. Uh, because uh, if you look around the camp last night and uh, this morning when uh, it's a Brume, you know, 
one that uh, Bruce made uh, the, the athletes, the remaining athletes in the camp are so happy, they were excited. You can see uh, a, a new life in the camp because uh, of what has happened in, in, in the past the days. Uh, but as it is, uh, life continues. Uh, just have to give it to them. Uh, they, 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 they have prepared for, for, for the Olympics and uh, it's time for them you know, to take the games uh, and go back home. Interesting. Uh, th that's another thing. But uh, no, feelers are from Tokyo is really not uh, really looking good, you know, concerning some athletes had to protest and some other issues that have been happening around. Are the athletes really happy? I can't hear. I can't hear you. It's not. It's not. Very, it's not very clear. I can't hear. I, I can't hear the question you just asked now because uh, it's not clear. Okay, uh, I'm, I was going to ask. You know, uh, generally uh, the performance so far. You know, of Team Nigeria because uh, the feelers we are getting is that some athletes are really not so happy because of the way you know they've been treated and everything, and also the fact that you know is like is actually affecting uh, their performance so far. I'm so surprised that uh, some athletes are saying they are not happy the way the way they are treated. Uh, how how were they treated? Uh, uh, the, the basketball the basketballer that was talking, I I I don't want to reply him. It's not yet time to reply him. But myself personally, I I will reply him as at when due uh, because uh, there are a lot of things people need to know. Um, there are allocations for countries. Uh, you you trying to compare uh, uh, United States of America that that has over 600 athletes. Uh, in, uh, in in the village here, uh, and Nigeria that has sixty, uh, it is four to one. When when you have four athletes, you have you have a you have a coach, and uh, basketball is coming. They, they they came with sixteen. They, they came with sixteen uh, coaches. Uh, you know for for their team. If if you want to give sixteen uh, to basketball, then what happened to what happened to other other other. Or other sports, uh, I, I think uh, they, they just have to, you know, calm down, uh, try to understand what is happening there, not just to, for them to just jump and start, to, you know, trying to you know, sell what is not uh, to, to Nigerians. Uh, looking at what uh, is happening in camp here, well, uh, there, there are one or two mistakes, but that, that shouldn't take away uh, what has been put in place uh, for, for, this, for this Olympics. So... Let, 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 let them just come calm down and, and see how we can how things have been done properly. So they, they should ask questions. What they need is for them to ask questions to understand how things are done. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Um Chimeze Metsu, that's the D Tigers uh center, he's been very, very vocal, especially after what happened uh, uh for Team Nigeria's uh, basketball team. And uh, He's also cited a lack of attention uh, to details in terms of their travel arrangement, logistics. He's talked about lack of empathy. Uh, on the part of the NOC, what do you have to say to this? I, 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 I will not have anything to say as regards that because uh, he, he, does, he does not understand uh, what administration is. Uh, you can't just want to come on air because uh, you, you, you have opportunities, you know, to, to buy data, uh, to just want to just want to talk down on, on your on, on your on your government or on on, 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 on the authority. So I, I, I've not heard what he said, but maybe when I when I try have time to look through it, I, I, I would I would do a detailed analysis of uh, of what he has said and uh, and replied him because uh, okay. everybody here uh, we're taken care of. And I don't know where, where he is coming from. And I, I think it is very important that uh, he, he, should, he, should, he should talk to himself and uh, not misinform Nigerians because the athletes here, they, 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 they are good and they are ready to go. Fine, there are, there are one or two issues here in camp, but uh, <laughs> we were all human beings. We can have mistakes at times. So <laughs> that is just it. Um, okay, uh, Femi, we need to go. Uh, on a break, man, so just hold on. Uh, still more questions uh, that we have for you concerning Team Nigeria, especially uh, about uh, how uh, the athletes uh, will be returning uh, to the country, the ones that are done uh, with the competition. Join us again after this break. You're welcome back to Channel Sport this morning. So got uh, Femi Adetsula from Tokyo. Uh, is a PR of the Nigeria Olympic Committee. And before we went on the break, we're talking about... Uh, uh, all the issues uh, that the athletes have been talking about, especially uh, Chimizimetsu, who was the uh, D-Tigers uh, 
center slash forward has had a lot to say, very vocal about a lot of off the court or off the track situations that have affected the performances of Team uh, Nigeria. Femi, um, well, first of all, what is the status uh, of the uh, Nigerian uh, athletes uh, that were banned uh, or that were disqualified uh, and uh, declared ineligible uh, for the events uh, because uh, of uh, not meeting minimum requirements uh, for their testing? Well, the, the athletes were not, they were not banned. Uh, they were disqualified uh, because uh, they couldn't meet up uh, uh, with uh, the requirements. Um, so uh, some months back, uh, Nigeria was, uh, you know, listed uh, on, on the A list. And uh, um, with the, the Nigerian Olympic Committee tried as much as possible, you know, to let uh, the, the federations, uh, you know, understand uh, and to know that uh, you have to do everything that, uh, that, that is required of every athlete, you know, to be able to participate uh, at the Olympics uh, because uh, there is this thing they call your whereabouts. Your whereabouts is very important, and you have to put everything. You have to do all these things so that you can you, you can you can uh, you know participate at the games. Uh, unfortunately, um, the the, the requirements, requirements were not met, and uh, the the athletes uh, they have they have since uh, you know uh, gone back to base. Mm. Um, the the minister addressed them. The NOC president addressed them. The president of uh, Athletes Federation uh, addressed them as well, and. Uh, they have since traveled back to their base and, and taken the coming days. Uh, they, 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 they will be participating in, uh, in a championship uh, across Africa. So uh, this, this, is, this is just, uh, you know, to, to try to, you know, work on their psyche so that uh, what has happened here in Tokyo will not really affect them as, as individuals, as an athlete, and, and, and as an athlete of, of Nigeria. Mm. Shattered uh, dreams are for a lot of those guys. Uh, we've worked uh, very, very hard. Uh, to get to this uh, stage, uh, but unfortunately, uh, something that could have been prevented has happened, and uh, they will not be realizing the Olympic uh, dreams uh, for uh, now, at least. Now, what about Blessing uh, Kagbari, unfortunately, as well, too? She's, uh, uh, she was uh, disqualified as well just hours before our 200 meters and semifinal race uh, for that positive uh, HGH test. Yes, uh, that, that, that was so unfortunate that uh, she was disqualified. Um, uh, that, that, that morning when, when we heard the news, uh, it, it, was so, it, it, was, it was so sad because uh, Blessed of Calgary over time uh, has been one of the favorites, you know, to, to get something uh, for, for Nigeria at the Olympics. But uh, when, when that happened, uh, you know, we just have allowed the process to take its place. And uh, the, the AFN, uh, you know, they, they, they've gone you know, to, to, to make inquiry, to ask, uh, you know, to write to uh, the integrity uh, units to really understand uh, what happened. But even if anything happens now, she has been disqualified. Uh, so it means that she can't participate in the Olympics again. Uh, I, I think uh, she, should, she should have traveled yesterday or be traveling this evening uh, out of... Uh, out of Japan uh, back to base because uh, of her disqualification and because of the, uh, the problem uh, you know she had. So it, it's so unfortunate that uh, blessing was uh, you know affected and uh, um, it's, 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 I don't know how to know how to explain. But it's, it's, it's very painful because uh, <laughs> to have prepared for Olympics, you can see. Uh, from from she, she she has created a lot of a lot of records you know uh, pre games and they're uh, coming to the games uh, she, she's just up there uh, and uh, we're thinking that she, she you know she will do something you know something for Nigeria before that happens so that is just the situation. Yes, uh, before we let you go, the Olympics is winding down. Of course, uh, some athletes are already back in the country. Well, what is the overall plan uh, for Team Nigeria after the games in terms of uh, the travel? Well, the, the, the plan is, ve is very simple. Um, if you are traveling next tomorrow, it means uh, by today you have to do your PCR. Your PCR is you have to do your COVID test because uh, uh, the test is very, they take it very serious here. So you do your COVID test and uh, after, after getting the result, it means in the next 48 hours, you, you are hitting the road. So um, everybody, if you are coming to Nigeria, definitely, you, I'm, I'm sure everybody has has his ticket. You have your ticket, and uh, um, you travel abroad. You have your ticket as well. So 
have, you, they, they have to, you have to go back to base and uh, uh, try to regroup again because the Commonwealth Games is around the corner and uh, the World Championships around the corner. There are other events that uh, they might want to, you know, uh, take part in. I, I think uh, table tennis will be going to uh, uh, Cameroon very, very in, in, the, in the next one, one or two weeks. And uh, I think uh, athletics as well, uh, they, they have, they have uh, uh, something, uh, they have a, 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 a meet, uh, in Af Africa, so yeah. every every other uh, federation, they, they have one or two programs that they want to put in place so that they can keep uh, this athletes in shape because uh, you, you, the, the road to Conway Games has started and uh, the road to Paris, uh, for those that will be lucky to be in Paris, uh, you know, has started as well. So uh, they, they, they have to, you know, keep, keep them in shape so that uh, uh, they can be ready for all these uh, this meets. All right, Femi Aditola, thank you very much uh, for making our time to join us on the program this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless Nigeria. That's, that's the PRO of the Nigeria Olympic Committee, Femi Adetola, of course, are reacting to a lot of issues uh, uh, concerning the athletes. And uh, I guess I uh, was listening very intently uh, during that conversation. I, I know you have a lot to say about some of the things that uh, are said by the PRO. Well, um, if you really want people to represent Nigeria, you have to respect them. Mm. And how do you respect them? You've got to listen to their feelings. You need to know how their mental state is, uh, the way they feel they're human beings, they're not children. And I strongly believe that uh, the position Chimeze took on this matter is legitimate. And I think uh, what we need to do for that is to interrogate the process that creates an avenue for a team to travel for 30 hours between San Francisco and Tokyo uh, instead of traveling 10 hours between the same San Francisco and Tokyo, just across the Pacific, mm -hmm. instead of going all the, way, all the way right through Europe. Now, listen, I've had opportunity of, you know, taking teams out, and I've also had this, um, this proposal that a team that was traveling to Kenya would first travel to Addis, mm -hmm. stay overnight, like an hour, I mean, like about 14 hours to get to Nairobi. And I simply said, no, that's not good for them. And I asked a simple question, the officials, where are they traveling to? How are they traveling? Mm -hmm. And of course, they were traveling all the way, six sure. hours in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And then you want the players to travel like 14 hours. It, don't, it doesn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. We've got to be realistic. When you're calling for the diaspora to come to represent Nigeria, you have to respect them. They're coming from another hemisphere totally. Yep. Where things work. Where it works. The yep. mentality is different. Yep. The orientation is different. The disposition is different. They are going to tell you the way it is. Stop inviting them if you don't want to hear the truth. Mm. If, you don't want to, if you don't want them to be speaking their minds, stop inviting them. They're going to create problems for you because they don't know how to work around situations. Mm. They yeah. tell you as it is. I'm sorry, this is it. So you've got to accept the fact that this is wrong. You need to overall, you have to interrogate. You need to ask questions. You know, I saw a Nigerian athlete put up something on social media and in hours... He was apologetic. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. They are not going to do that. No, they won't they will say one thing and they're going to stand by it. So this guy granted an interview to an international news agency, yeah. the Boston Globe, and he made direct allegations. Mike Brown did the same thing mm -hmm. and they can stand by it. I expect Nigerian officials to be able to stand up and defend themselves from these allegations mm -hmm. instead of trying to find means to say they want to, in, they dare not intimidate them. No. You, you see, you're dealing, dealing with different people entirely. Different he plays for Sacramento Kings, mm -hmm. NBA standard, mm -hmm. global standard. Mm -hmm. Whatever way you do yours here is different from the way they do theirs. Mm -hmm. That's a promise, it's contract. So when you're telling them to represent Nigeria, they're happy to do it. And I'll tell you something, diaspora children, they want to represent Nigeria. They're proud of Nigeria. Yes. If you go into their homes, they're playing Nigerian music. Mm -hmm. They're dancing the Nigerian way. They put, put up the Nigerian flag. Yeah. So don't insult them. Don't tell them they're stupid. Mm. You know, don't make an attempt to intimidate them. And I also want to point out something. Quick, quick, yeah. American kids are totally different. Yeah. <laughs> America is an extended version of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So we've got to be careful the way we handle this. Yeah. Otherwise, it's going to boomerang. Yeah. And when it does, they won't show up again. Mm. If they don't show up, well, good for the own base. Yeah. No, we, you don't, like don't, no, 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 you don't, you don't, you don't have own base. Playing. That's where the problem the is. Own if, if the, if the, 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 you know, the funny thing about this basketball issue, what I was really worried is the fact that you've not had a league for 
almost three years for the men. For the women, well, they're supposed to have a league, but I don't know what's going on. They're still oh. looking for money or something. Now, you don't even have a home base. And the ones you have that are representing you, mm -hmm. we are hearing a whole lot of stuff. So I'm, I'm saying, if there, this Afro Basket is coming up, Afro Basket Championship is coming up. So if you don't treat these guys right, and they are all pulling out, it simply means you don't have a team because I don't no. know where you're going. Are you going to pick only <laughs> reverse hoopers who just attended uh, the BAL? In Rwanda. Uh, you know, in Rwanda. They're the and ones you're going to pick to represent oh. you. So it's, it's a whole big problem. It so is. I think maybe it's something they need to solve easy and early so we can actually move on from what, what happened at the Olympics with the, bring uh, the Tigers. Mm. This, these guys represent Nigeria. They're proud to be Nigerians. Nobody wants to bring this country down except people who need to be checked up. Mm. I mean, mentally. Mm. Everybody loves Nigeria. This guy made it clear that they're proud to come to represent Nigeria. They're not even asking for anything. But what they're asking for is give us basic tools to work with. To work with. Everyone Logistics. deserves that. Yeah. All right. Let's, Guys, uh, let's, yeah. let's leave that and talk about something that makes me smile. I don't know how someone will break record, no, shattered no, and smash it. Before, we, before, we, before we go to, to Kirsten Vahan, yeah. I know you're very excited to talk about him. Uh, uh, the, 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 the long jump uh, final where uh, Issa Bume came yeah. third, uh, the winners uh, of uh, that particular jump, uh, uh, Miambo, mm -hmm. uh, Malaika, as well as uh, Brittany Reese, uh, they've been reacting uh, to that very, very competitive finals, just very small margins uh, separating first, second, and third. It was kind of horrible. <laughs> uh, I hate this position if you, are, you did all that you could and then you have to wait and see what the other girls are doing. And I know, uh, yeah, seven meters, they were able to beat them both. So it was, um, yeah, really intense moments. Uh, yeah. Um, I've had an extraordinary career. Um, I can't, I have nothing to hang my head low about. Um, I will go out as one of the greatest ever in the world, long jumper. So um, there's, a lot to that. Um, I have a 13-year-old son that I would like to spend time with and um, be able to give him the support that my mom gave me growing up. So that is mainly kind of the decision why um, I will consider retiring. But this definitely is my last Olympic. Um, and on the competition, it was a great competition. I mean, it's fitting that, you know, I've beaten people on the last jump and I go out getting beaten on the last jump. So it's a, it's really cool to be here and um, watch the next generation of great long jumpers continue to jump. So I'm um, a forever be a fan of the long jump and watching these two young ladies kill it for the next upcoming years. Seven-time world champion Brittany mm -hmm. Reese of the USA, of course, uh, uh, paying tribute uh, to the young generation of uh, long jumpers, including Nigeria's AC uh, Brume. And put Ruth Usoro in that Ruth bracket. Usoro as well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> fair enough. Fair yeah. enough, yes. Put yeah. Ruth Usoro there. I hope this, okay, I, I thought it was going to be fair way for her. You, you've been around for a while, babe. She's still young. She's I know. 34. She's 34. Yeah, but she I. started I, so early. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I get that. 34. Long, so. In Paris, she will be like 30. Mm -hmm. Seven yeah. and then just if she doesn't come, I believe that the civil man will You don't want to go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now okay, go about let's talk, talk about, about Kirsten. Uh, well, uh, uh, okay. <laughs> During the semi-finals, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, we saw what he was able to do, and everyone was like, "Okay, what else can he do?" Was it and gonna then the was final? it going to happen in the final? Yeah. And he did it. And you know, hurdles is one of the most difficult. You know, extremely, extremely when it comes to, you know, track, track and field events. But then this guy, the way he was able to do it over twice. And then you, you ask yourself, how so, do you set a world record? What's 5.96 to win a gold medal in a hurdles event? And take a look at the other record that was on. 46 before, that was a world record. And then he broke it. And then he went further in the final and smashed and scattered it. And of course... Right, his own record. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, yes. right there. That's how you, that's Twice. what great athletes do. Well, well <laughs> to be honest, I think uh, this pandemic has actually proven that okay. people prepared so much for this Olympics. Mm. They were looking forward to it. Uh, well, uh, the citizens in Japan were not happy that the team was eventually staged. <laughs> yeah, but the truth is that this would have affected the mental health of these uh, athletes of if they hadn't been there. So you give a lot of uh, 
uh, salutation to the Japanese Olympic Committee, the Japanese government for even staging this at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah. And when you look at an athlete like this breaking his own record mm -hmm. that he set like a few days earlier, and then you see him still doing the same thing, uh, well, I want to congratulate him as well. Mm -hmm. uh, he's done very well. Most of them, you know, they, they're so happy that finally they were able to make it because most of them actually improvised their training. Yeah, and they had staff, to adapt. And yeah, they had to adapt because yeah. of the lockdowns globally yeah. here and there and, and not able to travel to meet, to be able to assess their own standard over time. It took a long while. But then we're seeing a lot of records broken here and there. Incredible. And should we, should we be having every lockdown, every Olympic uh, year? I don't know about <laughs> that. No, 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 no way. <laughs> no, no, but, but the, the fact is, is cool for us. Uh, records are broken. Yeah. What does it tell you? What, what it tells this, us is this, these athletes so, are, just, uh, are just incredible. Under very, very difficult right. uh, yeah. circumstances, mm -hmm. challenges, yeah. and they're able to come up with all these uh, incredible uh, performances. This guy has broken his record by... 0.76 mm -hmm. seconds, mm -hmm. his own record. Mm -hmm. And this particular race uh, was one of the most anticipated uh, on the program, uh, and it did not disappoint at all. Uh, second place finisher, Rai Benjamin of the mm -hmm. United States, yeah. finishing 46.17. Anyway. Uh, bettering the old world record. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine that? Yeah, <laughs> he didn't win gold. Uh -huh. He didn't win gold. Uh, uh, yeah. Alison Dos, Dos Santos, Santos yeah. of Brazil finished third uh, with a time of 46.72 seconds. It was among the six runners that either broke a world record, mm -hmm. a continental record, mm -hmm. or a national record. <laughs> All in one race. Come on, <laughs> give it up Everything. to these guys. Man. Even the Nigerian athletes too, they're breaking their own personal best, yeah. national records. And so that tells you the story that they were actually over-prepared. Yeah. You know, somebody raging to go. Mm -hmm. And then they couldn't just uh, wait behind and not get voracious when the action actually came at their, uh, their uh, mercy. So mm -hmm. that's it. So, yeah, the athletes are doing very well, and we're seeing a very exciting Olympics. Indeed, very yeah. exciting Olympics. Uh, despite all of the troubles, let's take the post-race reaction now coming from the man of the moment, Kirsten Vaho. Away from the Olympics now, of course, uh, the Nigerian Professional Football League is still ongoing. We know our champions already, Aqua United, for the very first time uh, winning the league title. But there were games that are played uh, yesterday as well, so the concluding matches of March Day 37. Uh, these are the results. Uh, Aqua United, Aqua United going away to defeat already <laughs> relegated. Adama United 2-0. Amber mm -mm. dropping precious points against Sunshine Stars 1-0. That's our end. And Nassau United, what a story, what a season they're having. They've now uh, consolidate, consolidated our second position with a 3-0 victory over Rangers International. Rivers United 3-1 over Lobby Stars. Canopilus 1-0 over Wicked Tourists. Interesting result. We're expecting Rangers to get something away uh, against Nassau United, but then that just wasn't to be. Mm -hmm. Wasn't to be indeed. It uh, wasn't to be. Uh, uh, but, uh, I mean, what a season Nassau United are having. Can you imagine them holding on to that second spot? Nassau United, when the season started, no one thought they were even being in a conversation uh, for, for a continental yeah. sport. And, well, yeah. next thing is to see how they're able how to they... prove their metal. Yeah. yeah, on the continent. Now you've, you've won the league, you're coming second, everybody's mm. surprised. So go to the continent, let's see whether that is real or superficial. Mm. As... <laughs> it's always hard whenever Nigeria still yeah. gets to the continent. We need to go on a break. When we come back, we'll look at what the table is like and also talk about Rivers Angels who have booked a ticket for the CAF Women's Champions League. Welcome back. We're still talking about Nigeria Professional Football League. Now, on Sunday, when uh, Platz United beat Dakada 2 0, all they wanted to do was to see how far they would finish the league. If they were going to finish in top 10 or they will finish below. But right now, at least they're still in that bracket. Uh, they're, st they're still in that bracket. I'm talking about Platz United in that it's bracket uh, of finishing <laughs> in top 10 because your position, ninth. Yeah, ninth, the ninth place. On the log. Yeah, ninth on the log. Fifty-one points. Fifty-one points. Ahead from thirty-seven games, and that's then the twenty Canada. points behind the leaders. Yeah, Aqua United. Yeah. There's no it, way you can paint this season for Plateau. It's been a very underwhelming and disappointing season. I mean, finishing in the top ten is that I'm, what I'm that not, wasn't the target? No, I, that's that's not what I'm. I'm not trying to paint it like look yeah, good. You look yeah, like you're painting paint like top I'm, ten. I'm just, I'm just saying that. I'm just interested if, in knowing. 
Yeah. So, which are the teams going on relegation? <laughs> okay, we have two okay. confirmed. Two we, confirmed. Infa and Yumba and Adamawa Adama confirmed United. already. Yeah. So, yeah. on the final day, we'll know who is going to join them. Worry Wolves, Sunshine, there's some clubs that are really not safe. Like, can you take a look at those clubs that are really not safe? But before we do that, when you, when you single up yeah. to United, that's the reason I'm asking you. Yeah. No, because because of, they could have been down there too. Yeah. Okay, yes. Thank you. They could have been united, really. At, at a point, they were having some not too good results because yes, away exactly. from home, they mm -hmm. were not looking good. But the home games were actually good for them. And the way they were scoring goals, they couldn't replicate that away from home. So it was really a problem. And the fact that they were playing on the continent and then all of a sudden, well, you have about how many of their players? Five, I know three are already in. What's the name of the country? I'm trying to remember it. I can't remember the name of the Armenia. country. Is it Armenia? Uh -huh. I mean, three of the players went on trials in Armenia. Uh -huh. And I'm like, middle of the season. So, But, but you, you have a federation president that says nobody should go to one country. I, and I've been asking, <laughs> I've been asking if those guys were giving, is it OCT, right? Who gave them clearance? Well, are you have they been them? giving clearance? Are you going to deny that? But them? if you're what saying law that says they should stay, they should not go to a certain country. What law says that? <laughs> okay. An individual yeah. pronouncement, does, does that make it a law? Okay, it's just a That's pronouncement. If I choose to go and play in Armenia or in the backwaters of the Maldives, so whose business is that? No, no, let's be honest with that. Okay. But you real, for me, the real uh, sad story yeah. is the relegation of FC Fayumba. Mm. You know, because a team that came from nowhere, private, privately owned team, mm. Remo Stars left the last time. Mm -hmm. You know, these are some of the things we need to investigate, to look at. When private investors bring in their money, it is very hard, you know, to play in the Nigerian league. And they're bringing the money, the funds are not there, they, mm. the league is not that money spinning. Mm. So where, where is the profit margin coming from? Mm. The loss mm. margin as well. Yeah. So you need to look at such things like, why is FC Bayou, if I were going on relegation? This is a team some were, years back, not more than three, four years. Mm. They were in England to, uh, to sign something mm -hmm. with West Ham. Mm -hmm. And now we're here. So I think maybe, maybe uh, the management also, I mean, how did you manage the club? That's another thing. If you're setting up a club, you can understand that there's, am I setting it up for charity sake? Or am I setting it up to be profitable? If you're setting up a club, you have so much money and it's not making profit, it's bound to go down. That's what I think. Well, Cecilia, maybe, it, maybe the management did not really take profit okay. into consideration. Yeah. Because we know who owns Infa Yoba, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's owned by a politician. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have board of directors running that club? What, is your, what, what was your plan when you set it up? Absolutely. So these are okay. questions we also need to ask. So if you set up your club for profit, for profit's sake, mm -hmm. then I'm sure you will make profit because we've seen clubs. Bagada FC, well, for instance, sells their jersey. We buy from them. Mm -hmm. So that's a club that is N N L O, right? Mm -hmm. Third division. Not even second. I think third division of Nigerian yeah, league, right? Yeah. And yeah, these guys, they have a functional website. Mm. I mean, they created the, the Creative they, Championship League while, you know, the season wasn't but, on. But again, so these are some clubs again, that decided to... Cecilia, again, you, yeah. we also need to look at the sequence. Remo Stars, Ikorodu United, FC Ifanyuba. And yeah, you're not sure whether if Bagada gets to that top of, of the league, the Premier League, competing with them, whether they're able to survive. Because but they're from, basically playing against from what, state government home teams. Yeah, from what I've seen. And you know the politics involved in Nigerian yeah. football. It's I more know, of the yeah. politics than the game itself. But, but from what I've seen of uh, Bagada, why I'm using them is because of how they started. I don't know if I Yuba started like out of the blue. If I Yuba, do they have a functioning website? I don't know. Well, so, but that's another so, thing. So, let's start from there. So, Can I go to the market yeah, and get yeah, a jersey of if I Yuba to buy? I don't think so. No, no. So no, I mentioned Bagada yeah. FC. I mean, it's a small club. Mm. So what I'm saying is that if you're setting up a club, first of all, yes, I know Nigerian league, yes, it's not perfect, it's not pure. But you that are setting up the club. Yeah, you can create a standard. That's yeah, the thing. Absolutely. Create a standard. Yeah, We've seen uh, Vandressa well, you know, FC, the, for instance. The the air, that's the another team also. Under the dryer. Yeah. Mm. No, okay. Sorry to the woman. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. So, I, so, I, I've so, experienced Cecilia's, that. 45, Cecilia's, yeah, 45 minutes. Yeah, right. when you're yeah, 45 Cecilia's, minutes. And it is, yeah. If you cut your hair, I... <laughs> you're fine. I, I know what that means. So that's it. So well, it's still still women the beautiful, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let's, so have to do go we through. take reaction from yeah, uh, Plato uh, quickly? Of course, we'll take mm -hmm. reaction from Plato. But Cecilia has our points overall. I mean, it still just boils down to to the professionalism of the... Professional league, league in quotes, yeah. which is, we know it's not exactly... That professional is just it's, in quotes. Yeah, quote. it's just in it's, quotes, yeah. exactly. That's just it, the bottom line. It's just line. to create and an ambience of, oh, we are part of them. Yeah, so, yeah, it is what it is, uh, Cecilia. Okay, uh, let's get reactions uh, from uh, Plato United coach, Abdul Makaba. It's always a delight, you know, when you listen to him after he has won again. At present, I don't want issues where it's going to be after... 
the expiration of the contract, then you start talking about uh, renewal of contract. So I think uh, three years I have served and I'm happy. I, I can say I, I, I appreciate the guests were given to me by giving me this chance by the government of Plateau State and the management of Plateau uh, United. Uh, I'm very happy staying here and uh, I am very happy uh, with the journalists, the fans, uh, and I hope uh, Plateau United uh, will be uh, a winning side by next season. I believe I will contribute to that through my report. I will give my report uh, to the management where we have problem. They make sure they uh, work on such problems so that to avoid uh, occurrence of what happened this season. I have not negotiated with any club. I am not that uh, too young. In, inside a contract, I go to sign another contract. I will not do that. But. Some clubs have talked to me, and I told them till the expiration, till the end of my contract. Let me correct that impression. I was with Dakada from the beginning of the season. I started with Dakada, but the what, what made me stay away? I have a I have an appointment with the national team. I was, I was with under 17. Then I, I had to go. Then I breeze in and, and out before having a, having a time with the team and. Uh, to put uh, the team in order and so that we can be able to to put all these good performances they saw. Yeah, he was uh, confirmed, I think, because he hasn't been confirmed as the coach of the cadre. That's what he's trying to explain there. And earlier, you listened to Abdul Makaba talking about his position with the club, that at the end of the season, mm. he will submit, of course, his own issue to he submit a report to the management. And he's still with the club, so he's not living yet, which shows that he's a very uh, principled person. Before we close, quickly, if we have time to look at the league table before we wrap uh, up the show, do we the have the time? The league table is the league table. <laughs> Upper <laughs> United are champions. <laughs> Nassau United look like they'll come second. <laughs> uh, we'll do all of this on March Day 38. Cecilia, before we go, Rivers Angels. Quickly. Rivers Angels, yes. I mean, Rivers Angels for them, they are in the CAF Champions League. Uh, they booked a ticket for the CAF Champions League. They were able to defeat a Togo League side uh, the name is always very funny. A Togolese side, Amis Dumode, 5-1. It was after the dip that they were able to qualify for the CAF Women's Champions League, which will be taking place later in Egypt. So we say congratulations to Rivers Angels. Mm -hmm. For that final, they will, be, they will be facing the Ghanaian side they defeated in the final of the Wafu B tournament. If they do that, of course, they will be champions of Wafu B going into another CAF. Champions League uh, later in the year. Yami, thank you so much for coming on the program. It's my <laughs> pleasure to be here once again. I hope that very soon uh, we will not be sounding like a broken Vina record <laughs> and things will change. Hopefully. Amen. Yeah, can I say amen? Yeah, you just amen. Yeah. <laughs> thank you guys for watching as well. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. I am Taya Salam. I'm Cecilia Mogbe. See you tomorrow.